the intriguing realm of physics, fascinating phenomena are always at play, and thermal energy is one of them. Consider holding a solid chocolate chip in your hand. Over time, it would melt. The reason? Your hand possesses more thermal energy than the chocolate chip. In scientific terms, thermal energy is the cumulative kinetic energy, the energy due to motion, and potential energy, the stored energy due to position of particles within a substance. Despite the chocolate chip's solid state, the particles within it are not static, they are continually in motion. The particles in a solid, although confined to their fixed positions, vibrate continuously, pushing and pulling against their neighboring particles. The flow of thermal energy from one substance, such as your hand, to another, like the chocolate chip, is defined as heat. This heat energy invariably flows from the hotter substance to the cooler one. As the particles in the hotter substance move faster than those in the cooler one, the swift moving particles prompt the particles in the chocolate to speed up. Once these particles achieve enough speed, they start flowing around each other, transforming the solid chocolate into liquid. Voila, you have melted chocolate. Now, let's extend this concept to how matter can transform from a liquid to a gas due to thermal energy. As a liquid's temperature increases, take water as an example. Its particles gain speed and start behaving like gas particles, moving freely. Here is an overview of the way a change in thermal energy can lead to a change of state. It is important, however, to remember that temperature and thermal energy are two distinct concepts. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy of particles within an object, whereas thermal energy represents the total sum of kinetic and potential energy within the object. Imagine two bowls of hot soup with the same temperature. One is large, the other small. The larger bowl has more thermal energy as it contains a greater quantity of soup. Thermal energy escalates with an increase in substance amount. The transfer of heat through direct contact between two objects is known as conduction. This method is the sole mechanism for energy transfer in solids. Picture a campfire scene. The heat from the fire transfers to the handle of a pan you are using to cook your food. This is conduction at work. Though the particles in the handle stay in their place, the fire's high temperature causes them to vibrate faster, jostling against other particles. This chain reaction travels all the way to the handle's other end. Convection, on the other hand, involves heat transfer and fluids, encompassing liquids and gases. Returning to the campfire scene, observe the warm air above the fire. It ascends because it's less dense than the cooler surrounding air. This can be experienced at the beach. When warm air rises, cooler air rushes in to occupy the vacated space, gets heated, and likewise rises, setting a circular current in motion. This convection current is what we experience as wind, or in this case, the sea breeze. Another mode of thermal energy transfer is radiation, which occurs via electromagnetic waves. Different objects, like fires or the sun, emit diverse electromagnetic waves depending on their temperature. Radiation can even instigate chemical changes in materials. The heated coils in a toaster radiate heat that can scorch toast, while the sun's radiation can cause skin burn. There are times when we want to either confine heat within an object or shield something from heat. This is where an insulator comes into play, preventing heat transfer between objects. Your winter attire serves as an insulator, conserving your body heat and keeping the cold air at bay. Everyday items like thermoses and coolers are made of excellent insulating materials. In contrast, conductors facilitate heat transfer. A metal spoon dipped in hot chocolate quickly becomes hot as it conducts heat efficiently due to the easy vibration of its atoms. Skillets, usually made of excellent conductors like iron, quickly heat up during cooking. So, it's wise to use an insulator, such as a pot holder, when handling the skillet handle to protect your hand from getting burnt. The world of thermal energy is fascinating, isn't it? It helps us understand how we can control heat transfer to our advantage, whether it's by melting a chocolate chip, making a cup of hot chocolate, or even cooking our favorite dish. The next time you're warming your hands by a fire or waiting for your toast to pop out of the toaster, remember, 
It's all the wonderful science of thermal energy at work. 